City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at Consolidated.com. Welcome to City Spotlight, where we're focusing on East Central Illinois communities. Today we're talking about Neoga. Dr. Beth Pressler, Superintendent of Schools of Neoga, will join us a little later in the program to tell us what's going on with Neoga Schools. But right now we're joined by the City Administrator of Neoga, Brenda Evans, welcome. Thank you. And before we get started with what's going on in Neoga, Brenda, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, I was born and raised in Neoga and have worked with the city for over 20 years. In the last 12 years, I have been the city clerk and city administrator. So you're a native of Neoga, you've seen a lot transpire over the years. So what are some of the things that you've noticed that have taken place over time that you can recall were, were moments that were notable for Neoga? Neoga is a very small community, close-knit, and we've noticed that in times of need, they are very good with working with everybody. So it's nice to see that in a small community. Um, also, the new businesses have come in and seems to be growing. And uh, as you've mentioned, uh, you've been part of the city government of Neoga for 20 years and the city administrator position for, since 2003. Um, when it comes to the rules and regulations, uh, one that you had mentioned to me is that you deal a lot with zoning. Uh, first of all, what is zoning for the folks at home and why is that an important thing that Neoga has to deal with a lot of? Zoning is a tool that communities use to uh, help develop a community. That way it gives us a little um, guidance on where businesses or residential and industrial business, uh, locations can be in the targeted area. And one thing also that you had mentioned to me is that Neoga is the only community in Cumberland County that deals with zoning. Uh, why is that? The other counties, uh, the other communities in the county as well has not dealt with zoning. Uh, we put our zoning in back in 1999 and since then we have been able to perspire from that. We've been able to grow with it in a, many different ways including our industrial park and our residential and commercial areas. So we're talking mainly about geography and where things can be put. Um, how, how have you seen, how's, how has it changed from time to time? Since you said it, it evolved in 1999 is when you implemented zoning. How, has, how have things gone in those about 15 years? It's helped us um, keep the residential areas without having uh, commercial um, convenience stores or um, junkyards, anything like that that's not pleasing in a subdivision or a con uh, residential location also allows us to keep the schools in certain areas, the parks in certain areas, so that it's more uh, convenient. And are you pretty, pretty restricted in where things can, can grow in and out of Neoga? You do have a lot of farmland around you. We have a lot of farm ground around us and I wouldn't say we're constricted in any way as far as where we can go. Um, it's just finding our ground. Our boundaries are very tight at this time. Okay, let's move on to the economic landscape in Neoga. First of all, tell us a little bit about some of the existing businesses that have been there a while, and then you have had a new uh, couple that have uh, popped up in the last couple of years. We have. We have had uh, numerous uh, businesses that have stayed there for years, and that's including uh, the banks. One of the banks has been there f since practically the beginning of time. Uh, we've had an IGA grocery store that's been there for years, but it has also transpired, uh, trans from the previous owners to new owners who has updated and, and uh, has made their own imprint as far as that business goes. We've got a new boutique in town. We have um, a new bakery that's recently been in town. We also have uh, ca uh, Brighton Cabinetry is our manufacturer in town that has uh, been there for a few years and is actually expanding to double its size. We have a new nursing home in the last few years. So it's been a very good few years. And, and how would you say that being right there off the interstate has helped help Neoga in any way, shape, or form in the, over time? I think it's helped a lot when people are just passing through uh, for one reason or another. They've been able to see the, how, what kind of a small community can do for them. Uh, recently, uh, uh, last year, last winter, we had a horrible snowstorm. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, there was a lot of people on the interstate that were stranded in our community for um, about four or five days. And it was amazing what our community did to pull together to give them shelter and keep them safe and warm 
for those few days. And we've had a lot of uh, friends come from that. And speaking of things off the interstate, uh, you mentioned that you have an industrial park that is right there off uh, Interstate 57 and Route 45. And uh, how are you using that to get potential businesses? Well, one of the businesses is the Brighton County location there, um, and they're expanding. We also have another um, approximately 40 acres that we can entice other business to come in. We have uh, another location. There's a nice pond there that they can utilize if they ever need to. So it's a, it's a nice location. And could you briefly tell us a little bit about the Cumberland County Development Corporation and, and how that uh, impacts uh, Neoga? Cumberland County Development Corporation is a countywide um, economic tool that we use. Uh, they are able to give us training. They can help with current businesses as well as recruiting. They have a lot of resources for, uh, I would say, um, Enticing, enticing people to look at our community. So it's, it's a nice tool to have. Let's move on to public works. Sure. And first off, let's talk about uh, roads in Neoga. It's something that you mentioned uh, you have to deal with annually. We do, and our current council has been very good about designating almost $100,000 on top in addition to our motor fuel tax dollars mm -hmm. to keep our roads in nice working condition and up to uh, what our residents expect. So it's always been really nice to have them in the shape that they are right now. Okay, a couple other things you could talk about involving public works, replacing water lines and the waste water treatment plant. We are currently um, getting ready to start replacing one of the water lines on the east side of town. Uh, we are working on grants, applying for some grants to extend that replacement into other parts of that, that side of town as well. And then we're going to uh, work on our wastewater treatment plant. EPA is requiring us to do some things, so we're trying some new theories with that one there. Uh, also, we've got a grant for a Safe Routes to School program, uh, sidewalks, mm -hmm. and that's gonna connect three of our subdivisions that currently do not have sidewalks into town for safety and healthy reasons. Excellent, something to look forward to. Let's move on to the Veterans Memorial Park. That's something that uh, you guys have been working on, raising funds for right now. First off, tell us a little bit about that project and where will it exactly be in, the, in Neoga? The Veterans, the Neoga Veterans Memorial Park is gonna be located at the Jennings Park mm -hmm. on the southwest corner. It's gonna have um, nice tablets in, in memory of all the veterans from Neoga who has served in any of the former, previous uh, wars and mm -hmm. Things. And then we're still collecting numerous names. Mm -hmm. If anybody has any that needs to, please let us know. And we're collecting, we're looking at just under $70,000 to build that. Do you have a target goal of when you'd like it to be complete or you're just kind of going at the pace uh, you are? We would love to have it completed right away. Mm -hmm. However, funds are tight mm -hmm. and so we just do our little projects that we can uh, throughout the year. We've had um, fish fries, we've had spaghetti dinners, we've done uh, breakfast at Neoga Days mm -hmm. to raise funds, um, numerous different projects that we've done. All right, another thing to look forward to. Uh, you also had mentioned Jennings Park there in Neoga, it's been there for quite a while. Can you, for those that haven't been to Jennings Park, tell us a little bit about, about the park uh, and what it, what it offers. It's a beautiful wooded area that has um, a pavilion, numerous, park projects and um, activities go on throughout the entire summer. It's open for anybody that would like to use the pavilion, um, just get a hold of them and make sure that they have um, it free for a, a birthday party or a reunion or whatever. There's, It's a very nice park. And briefly tell us a little bit about Yoga Days coming up in June. It's a, it's a three-day event. It is a three-day event. It's with a festival. Uh, there's local booths and activities going on. Things from the parade is on Saturday afternoon. We have a carnival there for the three days. We have um, a beer garden in the last couple years that's been very successful. And um, just numerous tractor, uh, tractor pull, not tractor pull, I'm sorry. It's a tractor drive, I think is what they call it for sure. All right, before we wrap up here with you, Brenda, um, we're gonna talk a little bit about the schools. I wanna ask you a question. Dr. Pressler will be on here in a little mm -hmm. bit to talk about some of the things going on with those issues. 
You're a native of Nioga. What do the schools mean to Nioga and the surrounding communities? The city of Nioga f understands how important it is to have a community with a school district. And Nioga is such small that they are one of our biggest employers. So, of course, we're supportive of the board and the faculty and the students. And it's, uh, we understand the advantages and disadvantages that they're facing and any of the hurdles that may come up in the next few years. All right, thank you. And my last question for you is, uh, strengths of Nioga moving forward, what can you build upon? Still working at Marketing Us. We're going to work um, very hard as far as getting new businesses in, which will just bring more people into the community. Um, we have a TIF fund, a business district, and we have a Ralvi Loan Fund that um, currently there's two businesses that are, are using those funds to entice and uh, make inc nice incentives for a new business to come in. So we see a lot of growth and positive things coming down the road. Well, thank you for coming on City Spotlight. Brenda Evans, City Administrator of Neoga. Appreciate your time here. Thank you very much. And now let's take a look at some of the upcoming activities going on in Neoga. We continue now on City Spotlight with the Interim Superintendent of Neogo Schools, Dr. Beth Tressler. Thank you for being here. You're welcome. It's good to be here. Excellent. And before we get into the issues that are affecting Neogo Schools at this time, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay. Um, my name is Beth Pressler. I am the Interim Superintendent at Neogo School District right now. Um, I am retired. I retired June 30th of 2013 where I had been the superintendent for five year period at Carrollton School District in uh, Carrollton, Illinois. I live in Jerseyville, which is north of St. Louis by about an hour. So I'm a bit from you, a bit away from you. Okay. So you've been dealing with the Neoga schools for just a short time now, a couple months. Yes. Um, as you told me prior to taping, you've had experience dealing with uh, another school district that was in a similar situation <clears throat> as Neoga, if you can elaborate. Sure, I'd be glad to. I was actually the superintendent um, at Triopia, which is up by Jacksonville, Illinois, and um, was contacted by Carrollton School Board board president at that time. They were looking for a superintendent, and that actually is my childhood school district. I went there through my junior year in high school. Uh, my mother taught in that district for years, and so I had a lot of loyalties and ties to it. Um, I was convinced that I should consider coming and did so. Uh, they were honest with me though, they, they knew they were in financial difficulty. Uh, the truth is, and it's often the case, they didn't know how much trouble they were in. Um, in that situation, I learned after one week uh, that we didn't have finances uh, available to uh, be able to pay my employees uh, within about a three week period. And so I learned very quickly to scramble and, and what to do um, to address an emergency like this. Uh, during that five years, um, there were five tough years. Um, people, of course, grieve and letting go of the things that they're used to, the status quo, those things are very difficult on people. It's very difficult on a community. And I found that to be the case when I was in Carrollton. Even though it was my home community, I hadn't been there for 30 or 40 years and, and they really did see me as an outsider. So we worked through uh, those first several years with some, some tough changes. Uh, by about year three, we were able to turn things, uh, turn the tide and, and people could see the direction it was going. Um, I'm really proud of the work there. The boards of education that I worked with there were amazing people, very dedicated, made some tough decisions, um, heard me, um, were willing to trust in me and uh, they went from a very precarious position to uh, they've been in the black um, since, actually, uh, you don't get your audit until after um, you get into the fall, late August, September, October, somewhere in there. And so when I left June 30th of 2013, I knew we were in good shape, pretty good shape, but it, it was fun for me to hear them from the board president to call me several months later and say, not only do we have a balanced budget, you know, we're, we're black in everything. 
and, and they've been able to maintain that. So I'm very, I'm excited for them and I'm proud of the work that they did. And quite honestly, when I was asked to apply for this job, um, it was, you know, it was said, we know that you have the skill set that they so desperately need right now and asked that I apply and I did and came and met with them and ended up making the decision to join them. Uh, I've been there since February the 10th. Okay, short period of time. <laughs> yes. So, so tell us uh, a little bit about the school district you're dealing with, how many schools, students, and staff you have in Neoga. Okay, Neoga is a very similar sized district to where I had been before. The, the commonalities are just kind of amazing. Similar budget size, similar student size, you name it. So there's about 660 students in the school presently. I know that just a few years ago they had closer to 1,000. They've seen a, a steady decline in their enrollment, as, as most schools have, to be perfectly honest. Uh, right now the staff is about 110 or so. Um, we did have a recent um, reduction in force, and there were 43 people impacted. That doesn't mean 43 total jobs were lost, but 43 people were impacted one way or another. Um, it is a three-building school at present. Uh, they've had, they have beautiful buildings, exceptionally nice buildings. Um, and they went through a study prior to me arriving and decided that uh, because of the declining enrollment in order to save more money, they closed one of the buildings. So the elementary building, which again is a lovely facility, will be closing at the end of May. And so with that, naturally, you have reductions in um, positions there as well. So there are several contributing factors, the closing of a building, going down to two buildings, which uh, the middle school will become the new elementary. Um, the middle school age students will move back to the high school, which was originally built as a junior high high school. Mm -hmm. So it'll all be on one campus, which obviously has benefits to it as well. Okay, I think you kind of answered some of my uh, previous questions, but what has it been like to have to come into a school district and in such a short, short time frame you've had to make uh, some tough decisions we have indeed we've been working hard and trying to work carefully um, i happen to work with some really pretty dynamite staff um, i'm thoroughly enjoying working with the unit office staff and watching them grow um, it's been very impressive i'm also i've got to be honest the administrative team because i cannot be there every day and because it's been such a short time span I have had to delegate and let them know, I need this information, I need for you to audit this, I, this is what I want you to do, these are things I want considered, bring that information back to me. And so we, we've talked and worked through problems and problem solved together. I'm terribly impressed with the young administrators in that district. They, they're really an unusually talented, sharp crew. And prior to taping, you gave me the example of, of what Nioga is going through, and you compared it to payday loans mm -hmm. for our audience out there. Can you explain what you meant by that? Well, Nioga, right now, when I got there, we, um, I had been led to believe that they would not have enough money in the education fund by June in order to make payroll. Uh, and most of your employees in a school setting are paid out of the education fund. When I got there, um, I had to get a, a better handle on it, and so I worked with a, a consultant from the State Board of Education, brought him in, asked, are you seeing the same things that I believe I'm seeing? And after working with him for a 10-hour day, we came to the conclusion that it's actually May when they would not have enough money for payroll. So in doing that, I now know that I've got to borrow money for May, June, July, August, September. That's a solid chunk of money to be able to bridge that gap for whenever the tax revenue starts to flow in. So when I compare it to Payday loans, mm -hmm. if you think about the ads you see on TV and you always think, oh my God, please don't let every me or anybody in my family experience that. But you see these people who go and take out a payday loan because they can't pay bills, they can't, they can't make it for the month. Mm -hmm. And so they go in, they get the payday loan, and then when they get paid, in goes their check and they're gonna offer it back and, and pay it off. But what you see then is that cycle starts where people then with interest starts eating them up alive. Um, then when they go to pay off the loan, they're also taking out the next loan the very same day. And unfortunately, Neoga is in the position right now that when I borrow that money to get us through the summer, when my taxes come in in September and October, I'm gonna be marching to the bank with that 
payment, but the honest truth is I'll also be taking out another loan to be able to make the next payrolls. And that is a cycle, uh, this deficit spending cycle that they've gotten locked into now that's very, very dangerous. $992,000 in position cuts were made uh, mm -hmm. at the last school board meeting that, as you clarified to me, is money not saved. Correct. Um, if you could explain the funds used for special education, I understand those funds have to be reallocated, and where will you be re right. reallocating those funds? As you said, there's $992,000 of positions that were eliminated, but of that, 352000 of those jobs were related to special education services. Mm -hmm. Whenever you make cuts in special ed spending, there's this thing called maintenance of effort that you have to demonstrate to the government that you are, instead of spending it on paying for employees that we don't have the need for because we don't have the numbers to, to merit it, we instead are going to spend that money, we're gonna re reallocate it, we're gonna spend it elsewhere on those students. So what will that mean in our situation? They have been in dire need of materials um, equipment, etc., that they just have been starved from having. They've been going for several years with doing without. Teachers have been buying their own materials. So what you're going to see here is for those students who are in those special ed programs, you're going to see new instructional materials, you're going to see new books, you're going to see equipment brought into those classrooms to help children with disabilities. You're going to see appropriate technologies brought in perhaps iPads to work with uh, small groups of children that, again, need those kind of skills. You're going to see students beginning to become involved in living skills, developing living skills. So we're going to work on improving our programs and spend that money there to make it a better educational experience for those kids. Um, it's hard to let relatives, neighbors, friends, um, to dismiss them from a, a job uh, that's hard on my board members, I get that, but I've also, I understand and I believe they fully understand now that our job is to make certain that we're there to meet the kids' needs and that money needs to be spent on bringing the best equipment and resources to them. And as we wrap up here, Beth, um, what is the next step in this entire process um, and moving forward? What needs to happen for Neoga schools to improve the current situation? Well, obviously, we're watching the uh, April 7th election very carefully. Mm -hmm. um, whether it passes or fails will make a tremendous difference in what happens, the direction that we take. If it should pass, that puts $800,000 on the extension base, which will help us tremendously to have $800,000 of new revenue flowing into the district. But it can't be one-sided you have to also reduce your spending. Mm -hmm. And right now, my target for this year going into next year is to be able to cut a total of 750,000. When you look at a 750 where I'm spending less and then 800,000 where I have new revenue, that gives me a 1.4, 1.5 span here where now I can work with the board to turn this situation around. If those two things would occur at the same time, I believe that I can stop the deficit spending and I can keep the borrowing money to make payroll down to two times. If the referendum fails and I'm not able to find money elsewhere, the honest truth is that cycle, that payday feel is going to continue and it will continue to erode the system. You'll start to have a shell of a school district, you'll lose programs, you'll lose the things that make Neoga Neoga. And obviously, you know, I'm here to to take them, not just get them back on their feet financially, but I'm also here to help them move the district forward to improve instruction and make it a go-to destination. Neoga is positioned between Mattoon and Effingham. Great little bedroom community situation. It's a charming place. So what I want to see happen is them not just get themselves back on their feet, but rebuild for a better, a better tomorrow. And they can. Well, thank you, Dr. Beth Pressler, the Interim Superintendent of Schools in Neoga. Thank you for your time today and for sharing the information on the Neoga schools. Thanks for having me. And that'll do it for this episode of City Spotlight. Thanks for watching. City Spotlight is on YouTube. Past episodes can be viewed on East Central Illinois towns that have been featured on City Spotlight. Just search on YouTube, City Spotlight, with the show number and the name of the town. 
Listed on your screen are the recent episodes of City Spotlight. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at Consolidated.com.